I'm Matt with Main Street Medina, and it's a beautiful day here in the Medina Square. Today we're going to sit in Honey Bee Bakery and talk with some of our favorite people from around the district. Won't you join us? Today we're sitting down and talking with Kelly Parks, owner of Medina Center for Dance Art, and we're happy to have you here and learn a little bit more about you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So how did you get started in the world of dance? Um, I have been a dancer since I was little, yeah. my whole life. Because we're not talking and about age today. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we're not asking age today. And um, since I was little, and I've just done it my whole life, yeah. um, somewhere around... Um, my senior year of high school, I thought, yeah, maybe it's something I want to continue to do. Really? Yeah. And my family was completely unsupportive. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they were like, that's ridiculous. You need to have a career. You'll never make a living. As What are you going to They just didn't understand oh, wow. it. OK. So it how, took how, a lot of convincing. How did you get started as a kid? Like, were your parents creative? Did they take you to the theater? No, not really. Um, my um, mom just signed me up for dance lessons. I said I want to go to dance lessons, and she signed me up with Miss Angela. And um, I have hanging in the studio in a little shadow box my very first dance recital costume. Aww. It was take me out to the ball game, and he did my bat on on the stage, and I was the wild child. <laughs> did you grow up here in, in Medina? No, I grew up um, in um, Cleveland, and then moved to North Royalton, and then my husband and I moved down here to Medina. 25 years ago. Wow. Yeah. What brought you here? Um, we just were looking for a place to raise our family. Yeah. And uh, so we just started to, you know, look out of the, the city. We were in a pretty populated suburban area. And yeah. When we came down here, Medina was so much smaller than it is now. Sure. And, um, and I love how much our community has grown, but at the time it was exactly what we were looking for. What what part of dance is your passion? Like, how did you get started? What was your focus? What do you do today with dance? Um, right now, I teach everything: ballet, tap, jazz. I hate teaching hip hop, but I will. Um, <laughs> I'm just not as cool as I used to be. <laughs> so the kids will agree with me. Um, but ballet is my favorite. Yeah. So I like to be. I love teaching ballet. I love the structure and the discipline and the. Um, and and, the, and just the what to expect, you, you know, it, it's always going to be there. It's, you're going to do this, and you're going to get this result. Yeah. So what? Tell me a bit about your students. Is it is it multi ages? My boys, youngest girls? student is three and just turned three, and because um, we had a big celebration for her, and my <clears throat> oldest student is in her 80s. Really? Yeah. One of my favorite classes is Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock, and it's senior ballet. How cool. And it's all my grandmas, and they come in at 10 o'clock, and we do ballet class, and we giggle, and we have a great time, and we whine about all of our aches and pains, and it's a fun class. <laughs> How many grandmas are in the class? Um, we run between 7 and 10. That's really cool. So, yeah. so do they get to perform anywhere? Or um, is it just... They could if they wanted to. They yeah. absolutely would kill me if I forced them to. So they don't want to. They just love to come and take class and work out and have a good time and yeah. be with friends. And How so, did you end up with a studio right here near the square? Um, this is my third location here in Medina. Oh, okay. So we started down... Um, near um, all the, the new construction at Farmers Exchange area. Gotcha. And then we moved over by Root Candle as we grew. And then as we outgrew that space, um, somebody approached me, our, our building owner approached really? me and said, hey, I heard you're looking for a location. And oh, cool. everything just sort of fell into place. I yeah. love being part of Main Street. I love being on the square. Yeah. So it was a perfect fit for us. What's, what's your some of your favorite things about the square? Like when you when people come to town, what do you say? You got to go try this. You got to eat here. You got to go see this. Um, we love to bring our friends and family um, just to restaurants, and it's hard to pick one. Yeah. Because we love we eat at all of them on a regular basis. Um, we love to take them shopping and the events that we have on our square, um, whether it's the farmer's market or Shakespeare on the square or jazz night, mm -hmm. whatever it is, we love to, to brag about how many really fun community events are happening in this, in town. Very so. cool. Where do you see the world of dance going? I mean, it's, dance has always been 
one of the most important part of, of the arts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now there's dance competition, Dancing <sighs> with the Stars. Yeah. And I kind of, we talked with Michael Flaherty about how food and cooking has become theater. Yeah. Ha has the world of dance become even more theater because of the popularity of TV? Yeah, it has, and it has changed our industry a lot. Um, and I'm not 100% convinced that it's changed our industry for the better. Um, dance is really getting pulled to a commercial side. And it less, seems very cutthroat. Yes, very commercial, very, um, and it's and it's it's creating a different type of dancer, and um, concert um, dance is not it, it, it's, it's struggling. I what think. What is concert dance? Concert dance is going to be non-competitive. Non okay. Um, and when you look at it, what you see on a, on television at night when you're watching your favorite dancing competition on TV, yeah. and then what you see a Mark Morris dance company come and perform are two totally, totally different, different right. kinds of presentation of the art. And um, the gratification of the, the lights and the whistles and the glitter and the trophies and the I won yeah. is kind of taking a little bit away, I think, from the art of what we get to produce sometimes. So, uh, how, how do you rectify that in your classes? When students come in, they say, Miss Kelly, I want to dance because I want a trophy taller than me. Right. And you're like, but, but here's the classic art form. <laughs> here's the cla We're, how do you inspire them to, it's, to it's, follow is, and be honest? Yeah, it really it. is. It's been a super big struggle for us right now. That is exactly the one struggle that we are having in our art form today. And yeah. um, I am a, an adjudicator. Out in the, uh, I, I travel nationally and right. adjudicate at those competitions, so I understand the value in that. But um, I try and remind my students, it's like the piano lessons, the value in understanding how to play music and understand mm -hmm. how to use your instrument to create something beautiful for your audience where nobody wins is just as important True. as creating something where you get to take a trophy home. Yeah, that's a really powerful thought. <laughs> what? So I, I think most people today think of, of dance, you know, again, as like Dancing with the Stars or Dance Moms. Is there that much drama? There is. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that that would not be your answer. Um, you know what? It, Are you it, surrounded it, it, by stage yeah, moms? I, I am very fortunate. I have some really good parents that dance yeah. with me. and um, But I think with everything in, in society today, you're always going to have stage moms. True. They've been around forever. Social media exploits that so that we yeah. all giggle about it and we laugh yeah. about it. But I think in, for the most part, parents are really genuinely um, supportive of what their kids do and they have their kids' best interests at heart. So. You know, they're always going to be the stage mom. She's been around for years. Social media has just brought a lot of attention to her. <laughs> and it's, it's such a commitment. It's, yeah. it's, like you said, piano lessons, just rehearsing every day, mm -hmm. learning, learning that art form. Yeah, and at the, end of the, at the end of the year, you give a concert, and people enjoy it and appreciate the art of your music. Yeah. And I, I, that's what I really hope my students take away. One of the things I've always said to my kids and to parents, when you come into my dance studio and you ask me, why should my kids sign up for dance? I'm never going to tell you because she should be the next, you know, big ballet star or the next right. big. I'm going to tell you because I want to raise a generation that loves and appreciates the art of dance. Mm -hmm. And I've had dancers go on and have great dance careers and come back and taught for us and and are out in the world making their mark in the world of dance. And I can be proud that my training was part of their foundation. Sure. But I also have so many students that have gone on to be doctors and lawyers and accountants and business people and whatever else they do in their world, mm -hmm. but they're the, the appreciators and the supporters of the art yeah. because they understand the value of it. And I think that that's where I hope to make my impact. Yeah. How many students do you think you've had over mm -hmm. your career? Um, this is my, you're ready for it, we're not talking we're about not, we're age. Not gonna get, we don't have any good years. <laughs> we're not talking about age, but this is my 34th year as a dance teacher. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Right? How? We're not talking about <laughs> age. Age, right? <laughs> How do you f physically keep up with that? It's and harder it and harder great. every year. <laughs> it has to be a great workout for you as well. So, you know, it's funny, it's, it, it, that's one of the big jokes I have when we're, it, it's, and you see me struggling around town one morning, that's because I was trying to pretend like I was 17 yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm never going to let them see me fail. <laughs> sure, sure, absolutely. But I'm not going to get out of bed the next day. Yeah. What, um, you know, we've, again, we've seen the stuff on TV, crazy costumes. Where does 
does that go? I mean, that, like, how do you theme a dance? How, how do you, as, as an instructor, come up with the concept of here's the music, here's how I'm going to process that, mm. and end up with this production? production. What what is that? It depends on what 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 genre we're working in. If we're working in the ballet genre. I love to teach children and my students about the story of dance. We pick a story. Okay. Alice in Wonderland, Sleeping Beauty, oh, Cinderella, okay. The Nutcracker. And I love to put the literature in the lobby and read them the books and help them understand where the ballet came from. A piece of literature in a book is where it started. And then this is how Tchaikovsky or whoever took and interpreted the music. And then this yeah. is how we interpret the movement. And That's put really it cool. all together and put our put our production on stage. When we're producing a show that has tap and jazz and modern and all the different things that kids are working on and we're trying to showcase their skills, I like to put a theme to it just so that it's some integrity and continuity that mm -hmm. goes throughout. This, this spring, a couple weeks from now, we'll be producing um, lights, camera, dance. So everything cool. is, all of our music comes from movies. Okay. And so as we're, we're teaching them the, the dances and we're listening to the songs, we're talking about what movies they come from and That's you really know cool. how those songs impacted the movie, how those songs impacted um, just people yeah. that went, you know. So we try and incorporate a little bit more than just dancing to a song. Very cool. What, in your spare time, which I know you have very little, do you get to travel? And if so, where do you like to go or what do you do? Because my kids are, we're, we're working on that empty nest thing. My kids are all moving away from me. it's very hard for you. It's really you hard just for me. built a new house. And <laughs> no, they're all leaving Everyone me. left the nest. <laughs> so, um, so you're in a transition as well. Yeah, I am. So, but I, what we spend our free time seeing our kids. <laughs> yeah. Heading to Pittsburgh, heading to Orlando, heading to Slippery Rock, wherever we got to go to spend time with them. Where, where do you see the world of dance going? Like, or, or where do you want to take your studio? I never want to say that I'm content, because I think you always need to grow, but I'm very happy with the chances that I, that I find it, it's a privilege for me to be able to continue to work with a new generation. Every yeah. year, a new group of three, four, five, six-year-olds joins us, and I, I, don't think I, want to, I don't think I want to lose that. I love being a dance teacher. So as long as I can continue to share the art of dance, mm -hmm. I think um, I could be happy. Yeah? Yeah. Which then begs the question, what happens when you eventually retire? Yeah, right. Are you going to go garden on the beach? <laughs> Drink on the beach? beach? Yeah, we could do that too. Um, I mean, it's, it's yeah, I don't the arts know. are such a personal part of you that and Scott and I talk about that regularly because you know where he is in his in his corporate career mm -hmm. he's retirement focused yeah and I and could what? I could see myself teaching ballet classes at 90 you know really okay that'd be cool <laughs> maybe not running the business uh, yeah, not the day-to-day -day operations of you know the business that's a lot of work yeah. but I, I could see myself continuing very cool and, and until until they don't want to listen to me anymore I love it What's your vision for the future of Medina? You've been here for 25 years, I think you yeah. said. You know, the town has changed a lot in that time. It, it, has. it was a, a pretty sleepy, smaller, farming-ish town. And now it's, it's kind of blossoming, but where do you see it going? Or where would you like to see Medina evolve? Or how? Um, I love to see our growth in our town. Um, I would love to see our, um, and I, I think we get a lot of tourism. I think a lot of people come in from a lot of places to experience right. the cool things going on here. I would love to see us um, maybe find some way of um, bed and breakfast or smaller hotels or mm -hmm. something just to really continue to grow and share our community. What do you hope will be your legacy from being a dance instructor? Oh gosh. What, what do you want to impart that people will remember about you and what I you've done? I hope that they remember I was kind, that I was inspirational. Um, I finish every single dance class and I look at my kids and I say, I love you, have a great week. And I do, I That's love awesome. my students. That's really awesome. So. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate sure. your time today. It was a pleasure. All right, thank you.